All right, hi folks, Jack here from Peach Guitars. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a personal walkthrough of Helix Native. I wanna give you a few details of how you can go about getting this software for free, so stay tuned. Right, so we've just partnered with Line 6 on a very cool deal. That means if you purchase a Helix or Helix LT, you will be given Helix Native, which is the software plugin version of Helix, entirely for free. So I've made this guide to walk you through a few of my own personal use case scenarios for this amazing plugin, and hopefully it's gonna allow you to maximize the capabilities of your new hardware and the new free software that you're gonna get with it. So let's dig in. All right, welcome to my little home studio setup. I cordially invite you in to explore just some of what can be done with Line 6's amazing Helix Native plugin. Um, I've remarked in the past that I think the Line 6 Helix family of products, so whether that's the Helix itself or the LT or the little Stomp, which we're focusing on uh, today, is basically the greatest, the best all round piece of guitar hardware that you could purchase for any guitar setup. Now I'm going to extend that logic to the software and say that Line 6's Helix Native plugin is arguably the very best all-round bit of guitar-based software that you could purchase for your setup. This isn't a full demo of the plugin, but hopefully it will at least give you some ideas of its capability and why of all the millions of plugins that are available in the recording world, this is probably the one that you're going to want to keep handy at all times. Okay, so I'm just using my own personal home recording setup here today to try and show you just how easy it is to get this up and running. This setup is probably gonna look quite familiar to a lot of you home recorders out there. It's very simple, but it works well. So I've got my Universal Audio Apollo Twin interface, which is connected to my Mac, and I'm running for my DAW Logic Pro. If you don't use Logic, uh, if you don't have Logic, you can use GarageBand on a Mac, which is a free bit of software that works, at least for this purpose, in pretty much exactly the same way. Uh, and of course, other DAWs are available and this software will work just as well as a plugin on PC platforms too. All right, so first of all, before we get into this, let me outline a couple of reasons why would you use a plugin over the Line 6 hardware? Well, there's a couple of reasons in my opinion. Number one is it's just so practical. If you've got your Helix hardware in a gig case or whatever, it's out ready to go for a gig and you don't wanna have to physically set it all up, there's nothing easier than just plugging your guitar cable into your home recording interface and loading up the plugin. It's way more practical to do that than to lug the heavy equipment around, find the cables that you need to connect it to your interface and so on. It just strips out a huge part of that physical hardware based process. So all I have to do is connect my guitar cable to my interface, open up Logic Pro, open the plugin and then I'm good to go and start making some tones that I can immediately start recording with. It's important to stress at this point as well that everything that the Helix or the HX Stomp can do, tonally speaking, can be done in the Helix native plugin as well. And what's really interesting as well is that if you've made presets on your hardware, they can carry directly across and they're compatible with the Helix native software. So you can take your presets that you might use for a live situation and convert them to make some great recording tones and vice versa as well. Any presets that you make in the native software that are kind of fine tuned for recording, you can load them onto your Helix or your HX Stomp and tweak them so that they'll work in a live scenario as well. And secondly, the thing that I probably like the most is that it entirely removes the guessing game. So let's say you wanna record a track quickly, you dial up a sound you're pretty happy with to get the job done and you record it. Now what happens is if you're using the hardware once you hit the record button, you are committed to that sound. There's no way of tweaking it afterwards because you've recorded with that physical sound as though you'd mic'd up a real amp or something like that. With the native plugin, as you're gonna see when I get into the demonstration, you can record with that sound, but then you can go into the software and tweak it to your heart's content afterwards and you're not committed to any particular sound. So that means you might find that in the context of the mix, once you've recorded a part, maybe you don't need quite as much gain as you thought you did Maybe you need a bit more high frequencies to make it cut in the mix, or maybe you need a little bit less of that delay effect that it sounded so good when you were playing it to track. You can tweak all of that and none of it is committed until you bounce out the track from your recording software. All right, so in this video, I wanna outline a couple of real world use case scenarios for the native plugin and how you can use it not just by itself, but also to integrate with some other bits of kit that you've probably got lying around to get some home recording done as well. So I wanna show you how great the unit works when you just plug straight into it and use the Helix Native to do everything. But I also wanna show you a couple of examples of using it 
to integrate with real amplifiers, real valve amps, other bits of recording gear, and how you can use it as just a great mixing tool as well if you've already got some great guitar tones recorded in your software. All right then, so let's jump in with a couple of examples now. I wanna show you a couple of real world uh, use case scenarios for the Helix native software. I wanna show you how I would personally go about using this uh, in a couple of simplistic ways, first of all, and then later on, I'll come on to a couple of ways. It's a little bit more complicated to use this, but that allows it to kind of enter into your standard workflow of recording involving some other bits of analog gear that you've got in your studio and stuff like that. Let's start simple though. Okay, so what I've got here, as you can see on the screen, is a standard Logic project. I've just opened a single track and I've put the Helix Native plugin into the effects tray here. So I've got the Native plugin open here. You can see I've made a couple of presets that, like I say, are kind of airing on the simple side of things. So basically, this is assuming you're just going to go direct into the plugin and do everything with Helix Native. So I've plugged my guitar straight into my interface with just a single jack to jack cable. Everything has been taken care of in the preset. Now I've made a couple of presets here. This first one's called Sweet Litigator and I've based this around one of my very favorite amp models in the Line 6 range, which is the Line 6 Litigator here. If you haven't tried it, do it, it's amazing, you're gonna love it. I've paired it with the 2x12 interstate cabinet here, which you can see, and I've also sprinkled in just a couple of other effects. So I've got some um, spring reverb, which is taking place after the amp, and then before the amp, I've got some harmonic tremolo, as well as some distortion, which is courtesy of the Prince of Tone model. So this is just a really nice sounding, pretty nice clean uh, take that I've recorded for this, just to give you an example. So I'm gonna play the loop, and then what you're gonna hear is the power of Helix Native in that I've already recorded the take. So once you've got that down, I can now spend time tweaking the sounds to make them work for the mix as required. So let's hear it first of all, and then I'm gonna tweak some stuff. All right, so straight off the bat, you can hear I've got a nice, fairly clean sound coming from the amp. If I want to, I can now grit it up a little bit now that I've recorded it. I can also bring in that distortion. You might find I don't want that tremolo all the time as well, so I can turn that off. All right, so basically there, I've got my sound, I've got my track, and now I'm free to tweak it as I desire. And what's cool as well is that you, if you have Helix Native running on several different tracks, you can commit those different sounds. Say you want the distortion on, for example, for a lead part. So let's jump in here. Right, so I want my distortion on here. I can just have Helix Native run another track for the lead with that distortion on it. And then I can have the rhythm track without the distortion. So it's really nice and simple just to jump between sounds uh, once you've kind of got some preset sounds happening from the takes that you've already made. As you can tell, it's really easy to start tweaking stuff in real time while I'm listening back to these tracks in the context of a mix. All right, so example number two. This is very similar to the first one I just showed you, but I've made something that's a little bit more in depth. So I've got a Friedman based preset here now. I'm using the Friedman amp model with a separate cab block this time. And I've also incorporated some delay in addition to some plate reverb and I've got a couple of effects once again before the amp. This time I've got some phaser and a bit of a lead boost from a Minotaur which is basically a clon. So again we can just do the same thing and play around and see what results we get as we go. I'm starting to put the effects in. If I want to lose some gain, I can turn off that Minotaur block. All right, 
Right, so once again, there's some really nice sounds there. I don't need to tweak it too much, but at least I have the flexibility of being able to do that if I need to once bass and drums and whatever else has gone into the mix. Now, something else I want to point out here is that this native plugin is going to look very familiar to you if perhaps you've seen our video series on the HX effects where I use the HX edit software to show you how to manipulate the blocks of the HX effects in real time there as well. The native plugin is laid out in basically an identical fashion. So you can see that the blocks and the workflow of using the controls and the parameters and stuff like that works exactly the same. So if you're used to using the hardware editing software, you can actually do exactly the same kind of workflow now with the native plugin. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is something a little bit different, and I love the power of the software for this because you can kind of create some sounds that you wouldn't necessarily think to do when you're using physical hardware. Because I've just recorded with the guitar plugged straight into the interface, I'm now free to tweak it endlessly, and that means that I might not even want to use an amp, I might just want to utilize that direct tone. So I've made this preset here called Spinny Dream, and I've just had a play around with some kind of fairly off the wall effects. And this is going to be great for kind of creating some textured parts and some tracks that are going to kind of feather in to the mix. And once again, it's just some stuff that because it's entirely software based, these might give you some ideas that you wouldn't have if you're using physical hardware. Let me show you what I've got here with the spinny dream sound. <laughs> So I've kind of gone for a bit of a swirly Leslie type thing. So I've got a 12-string uh, uh, block here, which is really nice. It adds a bit of upper harmonic. I've also got the uh, Vibe Rotary patch here, which is actually on a parallel path. So it's not 100% uh, part of the mix. I've also got an EQ block and a bit of Glitz reverb. So it's kind of gone for a real studio tone, studio-specific tone. And once again, this is stuff that I just find works best when you're using plugins and using software to craft these tones. So let me break it down, I'll turn off the effects and you can hear the dry tone of the guitar and then you can hear what the native effects are actually doing to the tone. So let's lose that Leslie sound. That 12 string adds something really nice, so let me turn that off. And you can hear that just with a couple of effects got this really nice ethereal kind of tone. And that's just the kind of thing that's going to work great sometimes on a song where you just need to throw in a little extra part, maybe in the background, Helix Native has got the power to craft those tones really easily. And again, it's just stuff that you might not think of when you're using real analog gear. All right, so so far, hopefully I've been able to convince you that Helix Native is fantastic as just a plug and play, basically, interface. As long as you've got all the correct gear, this is gonna work flawlessly to just give you some great tones straight out of the gate. And I haven't even talked about all the preset sounds that come loaded with the native. I'm literally just making my own presets here. So in the spirit of that, let's take things a little bit further. I've explored now how you can just plug and play and get all the tones from the Helix native, but what if you wanna be a bit more ambitious and incorporate some other bits of your studio gear? Undoubtedly, if you're watching this, you probably already own an amplifier of some sort. So I want to show you how you can use Helix Native software to work with your amplifier to craft some really great recorded tones. All right, so I'm going a little bit more complicated here. What I've done is I've recorded a clip from my Dr. Z Remedy amplifier. I've used the Boss Wazacraft Tube Amp Expander to provide some speaker simulation, and that's gone into my interface. I've recorded the clip here. So I'm going to show you what the dry tone is without using the Helix Native plugin. Let me turn that off. Here's what I recorded straight out of the Wazacraft. Okay, that's fine, but I want to use Helix Native to make that sound a little bit more interesting. So, let's explore what we've got. I've loaded in just a couple of effects here 
that I think are going to really make this sound a little bit more interesting for some recorded tones. So I'm going to turn Helix Native back on, and now I'm going to start to play with what I've got here. I've got a room reverb, which just adds a little bit of space to the sound. I've also got a bucket brigade delay, just to provide a bit of analog warmth, and I've also gone for a rather extreme flanger setting, but as before, I'm going to turn these on and affect the parameters in real time, so you can see how easy it is to do that. Let's play the clip again. <coughs> Right, let's stick some of that reverb on. You can hear I can really drastically change the tone. Let's dial it back a bit so it's not so in your face. So that's given quite a nice bit of ambience to the tone already. I want to add some delay to that to thicken it up. <coughs> You can hear that analog delay doing its thing. And then lastly, let's get a bit crazy and let's add in this flanger. And I'm going to use the mix control to go from obscene to usable. Let's see what we get. That's all the way dry. Let's feather it back in. Alright, so you can do some pretty cool stuff if you've already got a great recorded tone from your amp, whether that's with a speaker sim box like I've got here, or if you've actually mic'd up an actual cabinet, you can then get really nutty with adding some cool effects after the fact, and once again, it's not committed to the recorded sound until you bounce the track. Alright, so last but not least, I've come up with one more scenario that I think is going to be very interesting to some people out there who like to work with IRs, or impulse responses. So there's millions and millions of great IRs out there now, and the great thing about Helix, both the hardware and the software, is that it can host IRs. So if you've recorded a tone from your amp, or even if you're using a virtual amp in Helix itself, and you want to add a third-party IR to the mix, it's really easy to do that just by adding in the IR block here. So I've recorded a tone with my Remedy amp, once again using the Sur Reactive load, without any speaker filtration on it at all. And I'm going to play that for you dry, and you'll hear just the tone of the amp. So this is without any effects from Helix Native. Some people might like that sound, but I don't. So let's add the IR in. I've gone for a Celestian IR. Uh, I've gone for just a, uh, what is it? Greenback 4x12 with an SM57 uh, in the bright position. So let's hear it without, and then I'll put the IR in in Helix Native. Once again, it's without, and back in. Now I can start to tailor this sound as well just with the IR section by using the low and high cut here. So let's shave off some of that top end. And we'll bump the level up a bit too. Alright, now similarly to before, I want to add in some room reverb so you can hear a bit more spaciousness behind the sound. Bring the mix up. Right, so once again, I've taken a real amp, I've added speaker simulation within Helix Native this time, as well as a bit of reverb and EQ shaping as well.
All right, so hopefully everything I've shown you today hasn't blown your mind, but it's important to stress that Helix Native is just a serious bit of software kit. And if you've been looking for an ultimate sort of do-it-all plugin for your recording software when you're recording guitar, I don't think there's any better option than Helix Native. And now you've got the chance to get a great deal on it as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the different scenarios that I've put forward today. Hopefully it's given you some ideas of what you can do with Helix Native and how you can integrate it into your existing recording rig. All right, folks, I do hope that you found that guide helpful. And if you have, please leave this video a like and comment down below with your thoughts. Also, if you have any questions for stuff that I didn't cover in this video, leave that down in the comments as well and I'll do my best to get back to you. Do us a favor as well and make sure you're subscribed to the Peach Guitars and the Peach Boutique YouTube channels so you don't miss out on any content like this from us in the future. So thank you very much for your time. Enjoy your new Line 6 products, take care, and I'll see you soon.